You've decided you want to make some fettuccine alfredo and you want to know, is it going to be worth it to pay more for the expensive ingredients? Well, we're going to make the exact same recipe twice. Once with cheap ingredients, once with expensive ingredients, and we're going to see what the result is. Is it going to be worth the extra money to get the higher quality or is it all going to end up being about the same? I am Nate from the internet and this is Brand vs. Basic. We've done a couple of these so far, and one of the things that we've tended to notice is that dairy seems to be pretty different in quality. When we were doing cookies, the butter seemed really different. When we were doing pizza, the cheese seemed pretty different. And so we thought if we did a recipe that had several aspects of dairy, that might be a good test. So we're doing fettuccine alfredo, and it's going to have cream, butter, and cheese in it. So if the dairy ends up being better with all of those, it may make a pretty significant difference for the whole meal. We've got our cheap ingredients over here, and we've got our expensive ingredients over here. There are a couple of things that stand out right away, and the first of those is the pasta itself. With our cheap pasta, we've got a bag, and it's dried pasta. Pretty normal for buying pasta, at least for Americans. And over here, we've got our more expensive pasta, which was $8 a pound compared to the $1.30 or so for the, uh, the bag stuff. This is also fresh. It's not frozen, it's not dried, it's just in the refrigerated section, and it's uh, it looks good. But we need to find out if it being fresh like that is actually gonna make a big difference. We've also got our uh, expensive New Zealand butter, and our garlic is like fresh minced in the store as well, instead of this jar of minced garlic in water from Walmart. Ooh, also our Parmesan cheese, the expensive stuff, it's still in a block. We have to grate it up ourselves. It doesn't come in a bag like this. This is actually a pretty simple recipe. It's easy to do even if you don't have any cooking experience. So you'll get to see how we do it, and then we're gonna have, as usual, a little panel of judges to see if they can tell the difference and if they can identify which is cheaper and which is more expensive. You know what goes really well with fettuccine alfredo? The sponsor for today's video, Morning Brew. So Morning Brew is an awesome daily newsletter, and it's free. Honestly, Morning Brew is one of the fastest and easiest things I have ever signed up for. All it takes is an email address and the ability to enter text online. Before Morning Brew, my morning routine involved a lot of searching around Reddit and other parts of the internet trying to learn what had changed in the world since the night before. But Morning Brew grabs a ton of that info and puts it all in one spot for you. It's got all the information you're going to need to get caught up on business or finance and tech in just five minutes. With other sources of news, you gotta search around, read a ton, and hope you're understanding what you read. But Morning Brew does all of that work for you, and it condenses the info down to just what you really want to know, and it has some fun, witty writing that makes ingesting that info just that much easier. Recently, for example, I've learned that there have been some weirdly big shakeups in American airport traffic. In 2021, eight out of the top 10 most busy airports in the world were in the United States including the Charlotte Airport, which rose from 34th busiest in 2019 to 6th busiest in 2021. The link to sign up is down in the description, and you should all go subscribe to Morning Brew today. Now, back to our pasta. The cheap pasta came in a one pound pack. The more expensive pasta, because they're making it fresh in the store, it's just however much fits in the pack, and it turns out that it's uh, 1.46 pounds. So I'm just gonna verify that we actually have one pound of the dry pasta, then I'm going to measure off the uh, same amount of pasta of the expensive stuff. If I can get it to all stay on the scale Whee! at once. Turns out we got just a little bit extra. There is one pound, 0.5 ounces of the dry stuff. So now we gotta measure that much of our uh, expensive pasta. really close. Oh, I need like one less noodle, one fewer noodle. Wait, now that's not enough. I need half a noodle. What the heck? I put both of them on, it goes to 0.6 ounces. I take both of them off, it's 0.4 ounces. I put half of one on, it wouldn't move. There, it finally moved. You're, there, another piece of a noodle, there, one pound, 0.5 ounces, even, equal. It's perfect. Okay, our, uh, our cheap pasta is rigid and straight, and it doesn't all fit in our uh, cooking implement at once. It gets, oh, maybe this one does, it's the bigger one. I did a test just to make sure that I knew how to cook fettuccine Alfredo, which I did, it's very easy. I think I used the small pot? Maybe I just had longer noodles. 
I'm not sure how much you're supposed to separate the noodles when you cook them. I feel like they were just cooked together. Well, if the expensive noodles turn out terrible, I already know why. This is why. Because I'm, I, I don't know how to, to use fresh noodles like this. To anyone out there from Italy or anywhere else with a strong pasta culture, I apologize for being an idiot. How are these the same weight? This is so much bigger. Like, look how much more pasta there is. I, I know density is a thing, but wow. I've got both pastas cooking, so it's time to move on to getting the sauce ready. And what I'm gonna do is get everything measured out and just sitting next to the pans. Everything measured and in spoonfuls so that for the most part, at the same time, I can just add each ingredient. The burners on the stove are actually different sizes and I'll try and compensate for the amount of heat that they're each getting. That may not work perfectly, but I, I think it's just gonna be easier. So, lots of measurement to do. Uh, one and a half cups heavy whipping cream. Two teaspoons minced garlic. Very fancy Italian seasoning here. Half teaspoon. Half teaspoon salt and quarter teaspoon pepper. Cheap Italian spices. Why is it pressurized? Measuring cheese, shredded cheese. A cup seems fairly subjective. So I measured a cup of this one, 8.7 ounces. I'm just gonna go for 8.7 ounces of the fancy cheese as well. I was going for 8.7, I grated some up, threw it on, 8.6. Ah, all right. Come on, there we go. Oh, oh, ow, ah, come on, come on pasta. Okay, no, oh, they're such, they're long noodles, I can't get just one out. Oh, a piece of one, here we go, yes. All right, here we doing. Yeah, that's done. So, not surprisingly, the pasta that isn't dry cooks very quickly. All of our sauce ingredients are now ready on their respective sides. We've got a good start on our butter melting, but we don't want any of it to burn, so now that it's mostly melted, I'm gonna add the cream to both. Color difference of the butters is very noticeable here. The expensive butter is such a bright, vibrant yellow. The expensive cheese dissolves into the pasta sauce so much more easily. It's like drier to start out with, but it melts much nicer. Well, if the expensive noodles turn out terrible, I already know why. I apologize for being an idiot. All right, we did have a little uh, unfortunate thing happen. I cooked the pasta and it cooked so much faster than the sauce that I just had to set it aside and I left the lid on and just it staying hot with the lid on enough steam, it ended up just getting really mushy together. So we're taking some of the leftover pasta that we have and we're cooking that up real quick. And so there's gonna be less of one of the pastas, but it should be okay. Gosh, it's so little. Okay, we are ready for eating. All right, we got the food ready. All of our uh, food judges, please join us in the kitchen. 
What's up, guys? All right, we've got our fettuccine Alfredo. We've got noodles and sauce. And uh, we don't have a ton of all of the sizes of noodles, but we've got plates, forks, take some noodles, take some sauce, uh, apply as you would like, and yeah. Don't guess yet. Don't guess yet. Get your food. But the noodles, eat some. noodles coincide with the sauce, right? The noodles do coincide with the sauce. Okay. okay. I just gotta say, this smells so good. It is a pretty baby sampler of one of them, but I'm not telling you which one that is. I did not make the pasta. Both are store bought. Just, just make sure you're keeping track of which is which compared to what's on the counter as well. Sure it's cream, butter, spices, and Parmesan cheese. It's gonna taste good. Whatever you say. Okay, ask Mark who just finished his plate completely. <laughs> yep. Still taste good, good, both of them? Uh -huh. They're both really, really good. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. That's what I like to hear. I'm also like starving, so this is like so good. Same, this might be, maybe we should have eaten before. <laughs> Okay, well to me, I'm not even getting into which I think is better, but to me, this is the most different result we've had so far of any of these brand versus basic videos. Everyone stand more or less behind the pasta sauce combo that you believe is the expensive one. Okay, Nicole. You have yet to ever be right at this game, I think. No, I was right last time. Were you? Yes. Oh, with the cupcakes? Yes. All right, you're right with the cupcakes. <laughs> this is the more expensive. And Gross. the texture of the pasta, it was not dry. This was fresh pasta. And the problem might be that I am not good at cooking fresh pasta. You put it in the hot water and it's like done. That was news to me. So with the, that bowl of failed pasta over there, the, it got up to a good temperature. I tried it and I was like, yeah, that's good pasta. I drained it, put it back on the pan, and left it on the stove burner off, but with the lid on. And I think just the amount of heat and steam it had going, it kept cooking. And so like when I tried to pour it out, it fell off as like a single piece. And then like it's, it's just, it's more like clay than pasta. So that's just my poor skill level and, and never getting fresh pasta before in my life to cook it. I've only ever used like the dried pasta before. They tell you to run it under cold water as soon as it comes out of the, out of the water. Stop cooking it. Learning new things. <laughs> Learning new things. Uh, but sauces. You guys thought the cheaper sauce was the more expensive sauce. Is that just because of the higher salt content? It just tastes better. Hmm. It tastes more vibrant. Like the seasoning tastes better. It's definitely saltier. They have the same amount of garlic. They have the same amount of Italian seasoning. And it's made with much more expensive cream and butter and cheese. As I was melting it in, the expensive cheese melted quickly and beautifully and you see you've got like a pretty uniform texture sauce. The cheap cheese, like it didn't want to melt and as I was stirring it was like clumping up and then like the oils started separating so. Yeah, yeah, it's a little weird. I think I like this one more because I'm not a huge Alfredo fan and this one just tasted cheesier to me. Huh. Which is probably what yeah. swayed me. Yep. Cause that one I was like, oh this tastes like Alfredo. Yeah. This one tasted creamy and like you could have got it in a restaurant to be honest. Like, like I could tell the pasta was overcooked, but even so, like it was like I could tell it was like a, a, a it was just a nicer, creamier, smoother experience all around. This one was obviously just a, a train wreck, and, <laughs> and, and I, I couldn't taste the cheese. The over cheese the sauce. still isn't melted. That's good. It's yeah. like you taste just the sauce, and there's like fibers in it from the cheese that didn't ever melt. To me. This is amazing. Like, I love the texture. I love the flavors. And yeah, I like you. I love salt. I salt my food way more than most people. So I do enjoy the saltiness of this one, but the flavor and texture of that one, oh my goodness, that's good. Oh, I love it. I think if you. Well, I was super turned off by, like, yeah, I mean, the. The gross. It, it does it not looks, look good. Yeah, bad. But, like, I, I, but I don't know. I had, you gotta admit, I was right. It still tastes no, really good. No, it tastes good. really good. Yeah, exactly. All right, I'm gonna do a quick test. I have the two Parmesan cheeses, oh, yeah. and I wanna see if, like, there's a significant salt difference, flavor difference. So, cheap Parmesan. Hmm. Rubbery. <laughs> it's fine. It's Parmesan. It really is kind of rubbery. All right, expensive Parmesan. That's a very different flavor. Um, you get a lot of the very sharp, 
almost approaching sour flavor from the expensive cheese. And the cheap cheese doesn't have that. It's just kind of less all around. It is saltier. All right, fettuccine alfredo. Is it gonna be worth it to use the more expensive ingredients? Like I said, there's a lot of dairy elements. We've got butter, we've got cream, and we've got cheese all in one recipe. The jury was still pretty well split if you looked at it. We, we had some people who liked the more expensive, some people who liked the cheaper. I am gonna accept fault on a couple things in this one, and I think that because of that, I really would declare that this is leaning toward the more expensive one. One, I have never in my life cooked pasta before that doesn't arrive like this. That's new to me. I've never had the fresh pasta to cook. And so I think even with the redone batch, it might have been just slightly too soft, or maybe it just comes back to the familiarity. And then with the sauce, I actually really did like the expensive one better. I thought the texture was so much nicer. While both had really good flavors, I did think that the flavors like blended nicer in the more expensive one. The cheese caused several texture issues. It made it all separate and it ended up, it, it almost had like a fibery because this cheese is kind of so rubbery that it didn't melt well in, whereas the nice expensive Parmesan melted beautifully and very quickly into the sauce. To me, I actually would greatly prefer the expensive sauce. I think it works so much better. There is one more thing that I messed up on, and I didn't realize this until after we had finished everything. Several people mentioned that the cheaper sauce was saltier than the expensive sauce, and I thought that was kind of weird because I'd put the same spices and the same amount of salt into both of them. But I missed the fact that I used salted butter on the cheap one and I used unsalted butter on the expensive one. So that was what led to the difference in salt. People, generally speaking, are programmed to like salt. And so I think that threw off the experiment just a little bit. To me, the expensive sauce was noticeably better. And I think that if I had made them both correctly with the, you know, the salted butter and stuff, it would have been a clear winner. All right, I've done my math. Uh, working under the assumption that I had correctly cooked that first one pound batch of pasta and then applied that much sauce to the one pound of pasta, that's what I'm going with in terms of proportions. But single batch of the cheap pasta, the pasta made with all of the cheapest ingredients, it was $5.54 of ingredients used for the one batch. For the expensive batch, we are coming in at a whopping $23.53 for that batch. So we've talked in the past about how dairy products are often noticeably better. Dairy products are often very noticeably more expensive as well. The butter, the cream, and the cheese are all way different. Although in this case, the biggest difference comes from the pasta itself. $1.49 for a one pound pack of the dried pasta noodles, or $8 a pound for the freshly made stuff. Now, like I said, I'm not very good at cooking the freshly made stuff, and there may be some things I need to learn about how to really get the best out of it, but to me, that difference was absolutely not worth it. The pasta itself, while they had very different textures, cooking error, the flavors of them, like I tried plain pasta and plain pasta, I could not tell the difference from the taste. They tasted exactly the same. And I don't hate the cheap pasta. I mean, you know, not great raw, but generally speaking, properly cooked, the cheap pasta, I still like it quite a bit. So I would say in the future, I will definitely go for the cheap pasta. I will not go for some things like the cheapest cheese. This was bad. I do not like this cheese. There might be some in between. You don't necessarily have to go with the $26 a pound grated up yourself expensive Parmesan cheese, but there are other types of cheese that I think are probably way less rubbery than the Walmart brand stuff. So like with most things, you're gonna wanna pick your battles, but in this case, I do think that choosing a little bit more is really gonna give you a better result. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm having a ton of fun with this series, and it seems like you guys are enjoying it too. Every time I get lots of great comments and recommendations, keep that up. I wanna hear what other foods you want to see me make on this brand versus basic thing. There's tons out there, and I especially wanna know what foods you think will have the biggest difference between the cheap and the expensive. Thanks for watching. An extra special thank you shout out to all of my supporters on Patreon. I could not do this channel without you. You guys are wonderful and I love you. Anyone interested in joining the Patreon, there is a link down in the description and your support means the world to me. Thank you all. Doesn't matter, just cut all of this. You're not gonna cut any of it, are you? No, you're not.